Hi everyone and welcome to Trades of the Week and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I hope you had a fabulous end to the year and now let's prepare and set ourselves up for an amazing 2023 which I am determined is going to be the best year yet. So I wish you all the best, you and your loved ones and we're going to support you here every step on the way. Now in today's edition of Trades of the Week we're going to be discussing the outlook for cryptos for 20. 2023 what do we expect not only that we're going to reveal what kathy woods from arc investments have been buying as well and now will 2023 be a different store in a buying opportunity rather than a bear market well in today's edition of trade of the week you will find out and that being said as well let's make sure we start 2023 in the very best way so make sure if you do like this content if you want to learn more about trading like the video and also press that alarm bell in order for you to get notifications whenever we're releasing a new video. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Okay, so let's start with the buffaloes as usual. So, what have happened since now? It was a few weeks ago, but as you can see, SEDG or Solar Technologies, Solar Edge Technologies has now gone down and taken us out at a 3% stop loss, which is great news. That's a moo, because now we gained 3% on our buffalo portfolio. A great start of the year. Now, Remember, when you are, this is one of the two golden rules, right? To make sure you let your profits run because we, who knew? Maybe it would have gone up even further. Now it went up to a 4%, 4.767. You can see that down here in this square. And we then moved our stop loss up to 3% where it then took us out. So 3% is really, really good, I believe. With AB, we, we have the stop loss at 2%. So we have locked in those profits there as well, which is also great news. So let's see what happens next. AVNS, uh, we had a 1% loss. That's a boo. And the same goes for RUTH, a 1% loss. Now, that is okay. See, we had two losers and one winner. And the one winner made sure we had 3% profit while we only lost 1% on the others. And that is critical when you are trading and investing to make sure you follow a strategy. With IRM, the same thing here. We have the stop loss currently at 2% that we've locked in. So hopefully there, we're going to get some really good results here as well. So in the previous episode, the price was down here and we actually had this and we would have entered uh, when it broke below this candle here on Monday the 12th. Uh, this hammer or the green candle with a long tail but instead it went higher so what we need to do every day during our 20 minutes is to recalculate we're still touching so we recalculated this and entered as it broke down so that is what we need to do when you really need to manage our trades all right so with that being said let's dive into some of the news what can we expect in 2023 what is everyone talking about and what do we think will happen now Usually, historically speaking, when we have a year where the market goes down 10% or more, usually is followed by a positive year. And frankly speaking, the world has been in a pretty bad place since 2020. So we've had everything from Corona, we had now an economic recession, we also had the war in Ukraine, God bless their souls and hopefully it ends very soon. And uh, we had all sorts of things happening, which has really been tough on the econ uh, economy. So what we what we are seeing now is that the fed is not anywhere near to pivot now what we think will happen that's a positive news that a, a bad year is usually followed by a good year that is the historical um, what the history is saying but that being said the fed is actually aiming for a benchmark of roughly a five percent fund rate now what might happen here is that we might see a demand de decrease for goods and services so what's going to happen probably is that since the fed is is um, keep higher or um, making the interest rates higher inflation is going up as well what happens is that goods and services goes up in price and also because 
of the Fed's actions, then companies, we have seen it all over the place, Twitter, Tesla, Amazon, they're slashing their staff, which makes people having less money to spend on goods and services. So they sell less, prices go, um, go up, and, um, and, uh, and then companies might not do as well, which might lead into something that is called a earning recession. And an earning recession means that we will see, in, so every quarter a company reports earnings so what usually happens is that when they report earnings they might be good might be bad so with an earnings recession then a lot of companies will have quite bad earnings so companies such as like growth companies such as Pal or um, beyond meat among others might not do as well so if the fundamental has changed in the company that you've invested into, you might want to consider maybe taking the loss because you will have profits in the future. Or if they have not changed, you stick it out and keep investing according to the strategy. We don't know what's going to happen. For all we know, we might enter into a new bull market. Who knows? So we only try to invest into solid and strong companies. And I will show you in the VCA section what that looks like. So... In essence, we're still bearish. The Fed is, does not seem to pivot anytime soon. Companies will get a lower number in staff. We have lower earnings as well, which will lead to a deepening in the recession. But that might change. Who knows? But all this doom and gloom we're seeing is a buying opportunity, according to us. Because like the likes of Warren Buffett has never bought more shares and stocks than he did last year in a very long time. Kathy Woods just bought more Tesla and Coinbase. Those are the two stocks she's doubled down on. Why wouldn't she when they're down as much as they are? So when others are fearful, that's the time when we should be greedy. That is what smart investors do. Do we try to time the lowest point in the market? No, no one can do that. I don't know how to do it. We don't know where the low is, but we're going to invest all the way down because our strategy says just that. So comment below. What are you doing in this scenario? Are you buying more? Are you panicking, selling, or what are you up to? So with that being said, we're entering new two buffaloes as well. We have one here, the OXY Occidental Petroleum Corporation, and we have a nice green candle, and it does look like it, wa it wants to go higher as well, which is great news, but we'll see. We want to be hedged, which is why we're also adding a short CCOI. So for those of you who are new to the channel, we trade in both directions. No matter how the, the market, uh, market is doing, we trade when it goes up, we trade when it goes down. So in this scenario, we have, we're seeing lower highs, so the top zero getting lower, and the lows, the, the lows here in the market, the floor is getting lower as well. So we do think there is a big and high probability that this will actually go down. That's all trading is. Trading is buying and selling in the shorter term, and we're doing this in um, with a tight stop loss. So in every single trade, we're only risking 1%. That is probability. That is what we're looking at here. So with that being said, let's jump onto the crypto section as well. What do we see for 2023? Well, could we see BTC go below 10K? That is a question that many people are asking themselves. And with the effects from FTX and other major events in the world, but I think there needs to be some kind of big event happening. For example, like another exchange closing down, then yes, we do think it's possible. So what, right? What, what can you do with this information? Well, number one, make sure, well, should you sell all your cryptos now and buy back when Bitcoin is below 10,000? The answer is no, because no one knows if it's going to go down more or if it's going to actually, maybe it has bottomed. Like we see now, maybe this is the low and maybe we'll go up from here. No one knows. But one thing I do know is that historically speaking, looking at the weekly chart, in the bear markets, Bitcoin has gone down 84 or so percent or 78 percent, but between 80 and 90 or 17 and 90 percent. So with the market now being down 76 or so percent, it was down roughly 78 percent. I don't think it's time to sell. 
I think that it's actually time to be buying with a strategy. That's what we're doing. We're not trying to time the market in that sense. We are trying to get in at really good prices where the probabilities are high. It's going to go up. We're seeing that right now. So we believe this is a great buying opportunity and not an opportunity to sell. So could it go below 10,000? Yes, but it might not. We actually hope it will because then we get to buy a lot more but we will see how that plays out now will the crypto market recover in 2023 even though it might go down to 10,000 in the shorter term yes we think is very likely if fed does stop the rate hikes because the the crypto market and stock market are quite correlated there i think think we will get rallies in 2023 as well. We might see Bitcoin up to 38,000, uh, definitely 20,000, and maybe even higher. And then maybe we continue lower, but we will see. But yes, we think that 2023 will be a big year for growth. And we actually think that DeFi will really make its entrance this year as well. And also increased regulation will be a big part. So we think that during 2023, we'll see more regulation in this space to avoid th stuff such as FTX happening again. So potentially that will be a big scenario as well. But what, what, so what with, with DeFi? What are we going to do about that? Well, with DeFi, we believe that, co that cryptos such as Aave will do really well. Aave is one of the biggest of, biggest of the, um, the DeFi platforms on the planet. So we think that they will do well and being down 87%, we think it's a great time to enter. Others, such as Ethereum, we believe is a no-brainer, being down 80%, but roughly that now as well, but roughly 75% from its high, we believe that's a no-brainer as well. So one crypto to avoid, we believe, at the moment is Solana. There's a, big of, a lot of talks about Solana, and Solana is down 90%. We've been buying all the way down. But if, if I were choosing, we're not saying sell Solana. We think it has great potential. Vitalik Buterin just went out and said, the founder of Ethereum, that he really wished that Solana will do well because it's a great project. And I agree. They've had some really unlucky stuff happening now with FTX, but we believe it will be a great turnaround case. But if I would be choosing between, for example, Matic and Solana, I would put my money in Matic. Matic is a layer two project that is really good, gaining a lot of traction and doesn't have the hardship that Solana has. And being down 73% from the high that we bought at, I believe it's a great opportunity to be getting into as well. And another one I just want to check out briefly is Cardano as well. Cardano is another one which is down 92%. It's, uh, it's such a great amount. But there are rumors that they might overtake Ethereum when it comes to NFTs by later on this year. So I know Charles Hoskinson, the co-founder of Ethereum and also the founder of Cardano, I think that they have done a great job or he has done a great job in building the community and project around Cardano. So I do believe, we do believe that Cardano will do well this year as well. And you can see the difference. Most most people, they buy, you can see last time it went up, it take, took a lot of profit. But most people, they actually, they buy when it's at all time high. We want to be buying now when it's low. It's a massive discount. Imagine your car, right? Your car is at a 90% discount. Like why wouldn't you buy your favorite car then? So important. So yes, and we believe another thing is that now, this is great news, the central banks are now allowed to hold 2% of their wealth in cryptos. It's all happening one step at a time, and we are definitely big crypto advocates at this point, but even just assets in general. And crypto payments are most likely to increase as well all over the world, which means also the, the merchants, they will get more options to be able to take payments, and customers can pay with various different currencies. So that being said, that's the crypto update and what we see for 2023. In summary, we do believe prices will go up. They will definitely go sideways. We might have seen the lows, but we will see if that happens. So, but now is the time to buy. We're not trying to time the lows. Rather, we're buying in as it goes down.
that is what we're doing and we believe it's going to be a great year for DeFi as well and we'll keep you updated as it progresses now in terms of the cryptos zoom has zoomed lower and it's down 84 percent so we have another entry on that which is great crm the same thing minus 59 percent and we're getting in another entry there as well jp morgan we are taking 15 percent profits that's a move very good right so we want to make sure that we keep investing and then keep taking profits as it goes up we're milking that vca portfolio cow we have a stop loss at 15 percent on slv that's silver that's been roaming higher as well and on mdt and which is medtronic plc or mama delta and tango and that's the the the, the ticker and it's minus 33 percent so we're entering again as for vba or Walgreens boots alliance we have now also taken 15 percent profits that's the third one so that's another move well actually the third one is mastercard where we took 15 percent as well so that's another move so I have three of them which is awesome to see and the one we're adding for this week is Tesla. Now, there's various reasons for that. One of them is it's minus 60%, which is great news. And um, th despite the shortfall in demand, Tesla actually sold more fully electric cars than any other automaker through the first nine months of the year. And they've actually captured an 18.5% market share. And they're also uh, actually the margin or the industry leader uh, when it comes to operating margin as well. So they're a great company and now they're also releasing their their trucks as well, which is re will be really cool to see. But looking at their fundamentals, what you will see in there is that this is what you want to see in a solid company. They have a great income. Actually, the peg, it means price to earnings compared to growth. When it's below one, you can write that down. When it's below one, it actually means it's undervalued. Earnings per share this year is outrageous. In the next five years, it looks very bright at 40% per year. Return on asset equity and investment looks solid. And they also have great margins. So everything we want to see in a company, really. So to wrap this up today and uh, looking at the result, I think it's a good start to 2023. Now, we've been doing this since August 2020. And you can see the results in front of you. So Buffalo, 64% per year or 64% in total, which means roughly an average of 30% per year, which is quite good. And we're looking to beat that this year, of course. The VCA, we had a 45% profit on those three opportunities, which is great news, taking our profit to 2,100 on six on the money invested. Not the money in total, but the money invested. And the crypto results are not moving. So with that being said, everyone, I really hope you enjoyed this video. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And more so, make sure as well that you take a put a like on the video if you like what you're seeing. Comment below, what are you doing in 2023? How will you start your year? Will you start investing? Or will you kind of have a backseat and see how the economy develops? And from myself, the whole team at Investment Mastery, I thank you for watching Trades of the Week. And I cannot wait to see you on next week's edition of Trades of the Week.